We all know we want analog volume control, since digital volume control restricts resolution. But what if I tell you different? So what about digital volume control? The Dutch expression, the soup is never eaten as hot as it is served, says it all. Let me start at the beginning. In the 80s, when digital audio conquered the consumer market, the A converters were specified as 14 or 16 bit, but the measurements I did in those days made clear that they hardly ever managed to meet those specs. The precision of contemporary DA converters is often specified as 24 bits, but here this spec will never be met since terminal noise will usually be slightly below the 20th bit. Obviously the same goes for DA converter chips that specify 32 bit resolution. They might work at 32 bit precision internal, but the moment the conversion to analog is done, terminal noise will determine the noise floor. Disturbing measurements below 20 bits. Let's now look at the situation in your room. If you're lucky, you have a very quiet room with a noise level of say 40 dB SPLA weighted. Louis D. Fielder has researched half a century ago that our hearing is able to hear discrete information 20 dB below the noise floor. That was for tape recorders, he worked at Ampex. But I suspect the same goes for en environmental noise. This means that we might be able to hear discrete information as being not noise down to 20 dB SPL. Now let's also assume that you should play very loud at say 90 dB SPLA. Then you need a dynamic window of 70 dBs, the difference between 20 and 90 dBs. Then know that you only need 12 bits to get a dynamic range of 72 dB. And you might conclude that a 12 bit system would suffice. Of course you now buy high res music that has 24 bit resolution, don't you? Well, AZ tracks and high res audio could easily be sued for not supplying what they promise. Check any download from any source that promise you 24 bit PCM music and you will find there will not be a single recording that really offers 24 bit resolution for the same reason 24 bit DA converters do not exist. There are also no AD converters offering such resolution since thermal noise will limit them. Don't forget that as soon as you use more than one microphone, each and every mic will add its noise too. Now please don't sue HD tracks or high res resolution, they provide files that use 24 bit words to store the samples in. It's just that the lower 4 or to 8 bits will most certainly contain no information that's relevant to the music reproduction. This all seems to indicate that the reduction of sound quality by digital volume control is an urban myth. But is it? There must have been a number of people that heard this happening, and they did. In the early years, knowledge of digital audio, especially with the existing audio manufacturers, was often, although not always, rather low. Certainly signal processing on digital audio was uncharted territory for many. Any change in volume? Any change regardless in digital audio needs calculation and to do precise calculations you need a higher resolution during that calculation. Then proper rounding off back to the original res resolution must be done with care or the outline of the music waves get jagged. Let's see how that's done. When a waveform is so small that it is smaller than the voltage the least significant bit stands for, it will normally not be encoded. The trick now is to add a tiny bit of noise, often the half the voltage of the least significant bit would see. Now this waveform gets fatter and triggers the least significant bit. This technique is called ditter and it is a science on its own. There are all kinds of variants to noise added and even the level might be chosen differently. Over 
the almost four decades we live with digital audio, the knowledge on this technique has gained enormously and together with the ever-growing computational power it has become possible to, notice my careful choice of words here, do volume control with hardly to no audible degradation. Older equipment or software might not have implemented sufficient bit depth and or decent dittering schemes and will lead to harshness, lack of detail, transient degradation, time smearing and so on. Proper digital audio processing can be done extremely well and depending on the philosophy of the designer could even improve things like time smearing. What can we learn from this? Well, first you should have noticed I don't take a final standpoint on the matter. But think with me, if you have set your amp for a loudness of 90 dB SPLA, you at best need 70 dB dynamic range. Let's say that we might need 96 dB or 16 bits, just for argument's sake. Then the DA converter still has 4 bits to spare if we agree on the max resolution of 20 bits. 4 bits is 24 dB dynamic range. If then the digital processing is done appropriate with the right jittering, would there still be audio degradation? So the implementation might be the discerning factor and if you, for convenience reasons, use the digital volume control and you do hear no difference, trust your ears and not the big mouths on the web that force you to think like them. And if you have questions, post them below this video so everyone can learn from it and your question will not get lost in the large amounts of mail I, I get. Especially email asking for personal advice are impossible to answer and will be stopped by my moderator. So if you want to stay informed, subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you like this video, Please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do and more will be appreciated. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.